Hey guys, it's Bill from Linden, Tennessee. So, full of videos this weekend. So I got the actuator mounted. I hope that's where it goes, because that's where it goes. I still need to make a little part that comes up here and captures those holes. Or, I could just drill some holes right here and drill and tap them on the other side of this. And then I just have two more right here. So there's two right there instead of using those two. Um, that would probably be a lot nicer. Um, and I may end up doing that. I don't know, I decided yet. Then, of course, got the ones back there. Uh, yeah, someone pointed out in the comments I didn't really mention this. I got tires. So, there's the tires. The, um, the track width's a little bit different. About an inch wider outside of the tire, outside of the tire in front than in the back. So, if that starts to bother me, and it probably will, I'll just whip up some half-inch spacers and put them on the rear axle space those back tires out so and in other news if i kind of got all that done this is what i've done uh, the grill is just kind of hanging out but this is these are some leaf modules each of these leaf modules actually have four cells in it uh, whenever we talk about batteries we talk about cell groups of cells. Uh, like if you go and buy a double A battery, that's actually a, a cell. If you put two of those double A batteries together into some configuration, then it becomes a battery. So inside each one of these cans is four cells. Uh, and two of them are in parallel and two of them are in series. So it ends up and you charge them to you charge them to like 4.1, 4.15. Their nominal voltage is about 4.6. So like their average voltage is about 4.6. Anyway, it ends up being like an 8-volt battery, each one of those. And then you put 7 of those in series, you end up with a 56-volt battery. And a 56-volt battery is a 48-volt battery. Just go with me on it. That's how it is. Um, yeah, that's just how it is. Like a 12-volt battery in your car is actually 13 volts. And, uh, you know, that's just the way it is. So, but anyway... I was going to put those lithium iron phosphate in there. Uh, all 16 of those together is a 48 volt battery, 56 volt battery. And it comes out to about 5.6 kilowatt hours worth of energy. All of these together is a 56 volt battery. And it's about 3.5 kilowatt hours of energy. Ouch. Oh, money, money. Come with me. This is my little lawn tractor that I use right now. It has a Chevy Volt with a V, Victor, battery modules in it. And each one of these is 12 cells. So there's 12 cells right there and 12 cells right there. So whereas, so this is 24 cells, but it's 12 and 12 and then those two are in parallel together whenever you put batteries in series you you add the voltages together whenever you put them in parallel you add their capacities together so that's how that works so since there are only 12 in here the nominal voltage on each one of the cells is the same 3.6 ish so these are 49.2 volts is what you charge these two instead of 56 so slightly lower voltage so yeah so when you combine these together that's about two and a half kilowatt hours now this little dude i can cut for one hour i can cut one acre one acre for one hour with two and a half kilowatt hours with three and a half kilowatt hours theoretically i should be able to cut for three hours oh well, that's not true I should be able to cut for two and a half hours um is that right? Good Lord. Put me on the spot. Do math. I don't know. Anyway, longer, longer amount of time. Now, I don't know how efficient this tractor will be, if it'll get the same sort of hours per charge as that little guy does. Being all-wheel drive, um, it's, you know, turning an extra transmission, um, and it's probably going to be heavier. I hope it's going to be heavier. It better be heavier. Um, yeah, so, I don't know. Either way, it's definitely going to do one hour. The cool thing about 
having the battery set up like this, seven, if it wasn't enough, all I gotta do is just add seven more to the top and it'll actually fit. If I did my hood line from here over to wherever my console is gonna be, it'll fit 14 of these, mo of these little modules will fit. But seven fits really nice. And if I do seven, then I can put the controller on top right there and that looks pretty sharp. Run the, uh, God damn, my knee. Don't get old, folks. I'm not that old. Um, yeah, if I don't run the, if I put the controller there, then I can have the coolant lines for this little chill plate. They go up here to a little radiator. A uh, couple problems with this. One, if there is ever some kind of a coolant leak, not likely, but it's possible. If there's a coolant leak from here, it's going to drip all over my battery, so I don't want that. I guess I could scoot it forward a little bit. There, problem solved there. Uh, the other problem is, if, like I say, I decide that I want to put, I want to double the pack size, that controller's in the way. i got to find somewhere else for it. So, pretty good chance that's not where that's going to end up. That's not what's going to happen. I'll probably end up mounting this up and down this way. Right there. That seems like a kind of cool place for that. I could put it, like, right in here. You know, something like that. So that's a cool place for that, maybe. The chill plate would go underneath of it, and then the coolant lines would exit down. And they'd be out of sight, out of mind. So that'd be kind of nice. Um, the way I got these this battery mounted in here was kind of one of those... I'm not sure how I'm going to do this, but as I was doing what I was doing, it was just sort of like a, a, hey, how about you try this way? So, first iteration was to run 5 16ths all thread through, I got 8 inch plate down there, that's 8 inch plate, so I was going to tap that for 5 16ths, 20, and then I was just going to drive this all thread straight in there, of course it'd be longer pieces, but I was going to put that straight in there, and then stack all the batteries on top, tighten the batteries down into the all thread, and it just becomes part of a tractor. Uh, I don't like that because if I ever needed to service one of the batteries, I'd have to take them all out one at a time and undo all the connections and all that stuff. Kind of a pain in the butt. I probably never have to do that. I've never had to do that to this tractor, but you know, as soon as I make it so I can't do that, you can be certain that I'll have to do that. Um, so I don't want to do it that way. And if I uh, so, so I've got those holes drilled. Now, on the bottom of this stack of batteries, there's a plate, there's a plate down there. That was the original mounting system from the leaf, from the pack, from the leaf battery pack. And I just kind of trimmed it as I needed. And then it's got these, um, I think they're M6, M6 all thread goes all the way through it. And... It occurred to me that if I run those M6 all the way through that plate I just showed you, and further still, they'll poke right through those holes that I just drilled and tapped for the 5 16 And then I can come up from behind and put a nut on there. And that nut will pull this battery down tight into the tractor. And it's stop and it's solid and it's good. And I don't have to I don't have to put any bolts down the side here or I don't have to do anything. That just holds it solid, holds it solid. So that's kind of great. So that's what I'm going to do. And the uh, there's little mm, spacers that go between each of these. There's a whole bunch of more of them. There's little spacers that go between each one of these. These go on the on the terminal side. So so imagine if you will that this is actually between that's between cells right there. So what and so it's got these little studs that stick out. And what I can do there, certainly if I make this stack taller, but I can put one of those right about here and then make a little support rod that comes down and ties into this frame. Have a little bracket welded on the inside and just, I mean, just a simple, just a simple rod with a clevis on the end of it would all, would all take just to, just to keep it from moving around. Now it, it does move around a lot now because I don't have it bolted down, but it's, it's a pretty solid deal when it's all tightened together. Anyway, um... So yeah, so that's kind of cool. Uh, if you remember from a while ago, I'd said that I was thinking about using these Tesla batteries. Now each one of these is 24 volts. Each one of these is uh, six cells. So you put two of those together in series and you get 12 cells, just like this. 
Each one of those modules is five and a half kilowatt hours. So you put two of them together, that's 10 or 11 kilowatt hours. So a lot more. So that's, that's two and a half. So that's uh, like five times more energy than that. So if I can go an hour on that, then I could go five hours with that. I don't want to cut the grass for five hours. Uh, what I didn't like about those is that they stuck out real far. They actually stuck out beyond this here. They stuck out further. So that means that my grill would have to come out further, which is just extending this tractor even longer, making the nose longer, making the nose dip down further. If one of the rear tires articulates, uh, just kind of, yeah, it's a lot of energy. And it, um, so that's no good. Then if I were to use the lithium iron phosphate modules over there, they come out to about right here, I think, ish. And that's better. That is much better. Um, but then, you know, I got to thinking, well, maybe I could use these things. And yeah, I really like how that is. Because that means I can set this grill back further. Uh, there's like a little body line that's molded right there. And that, if I do it carefully, I can make that sort of tie into this shape right here, which is, you know, aesthetically kind of cool. Nobody but me would notice, but you know, it is, it's there. And, and then down, down there, you see how it's kind of, it's narrower at the bottom. So all I got to do there is just come in on the inside, sort of, uh, run a, get the angle grinder out and, and just cut a groove about halfway through this sheet metal and cut it down here on the bottom and then just bend it in and it'll meet that, it'll meet that, uh, that taper on the bottom. So that'll make that look kind of nice. And then everybody's got a little 1500 pound winch laying around. This was actually on the front of the lawn tractor, but I want to have a winch on this for sure. Uh, I would have pre preferred the winch on this for sure to be like centered. So it's actually pulling in the middle, but because you never know when you're going to need a winch. And if you just happen to have one laying around, you might as well use it. One thing that I could end up doing is I could make a, um, a bumper, a rear bumper that comes up like that. Sort of like my Jeep. See the Jeep? Yeah, sort of a bumper that is something like that. Just narrower. Have it so it would kind of come up like this and have a hook right there. And then I could run the line from that up through the hook and then come down. And I could have a plow. I could have a plow on the front, maybe a snow plow. I guess I could actually push dirt if I make it beefy enough. And then have the, the arms for the plow go back and tie into the axle back there somewhere and then that winch could be used to lift the plow up and down uh, I want at some point to have a front end loader on this mm. but it'd be cool to have a removable front end loader and then when the front end loader is not on it then I can have a plow because the front end loader is not a plow <laughs> they're not the same uh, they don't do the same thing front end loader is a lot more handy to have around picking up stuff put forklift forks on it do stuff with a front end loader but a plow is much, much better at uh, just pushing dirt and rocks and stuff. So I want to have a plow. And having a winch on there would allow that to happen a lot easier. So anyway, that's where we're at. So now all I got to do is got to uh, make up the, the little uh, coupler that goes on here. And then I got to fabricate up a little bracket that goes on the inside right there. This is where it'd be nice to have a, a 3D CAD program. Because then I can sort of test if I if I have the the bracket right here. If mm, where's my hold hold please let me find something. Yeah, if I have this right here, would it be better to have it there, or would it be better to have it here, or would it be better to have it you know clear back here? So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to measure the distance from that. This is the center of travel right here. So I'm going to measure the distance from there to the center pivot, and then I'll measure from the center pivot back this way, and that's where I'll place this. So, so that'll basically be centered on that thing, and then I'll kind of, and I'll have this kind of as close to the frame as I can. It'll sort of put an angle on that. It'll put some sideways thrust on this actuator. That may or may not be a good thing. Probably, probably not a good thing, I don't know. Um, I probably shouldn't do that. Anyway, that's how that's how this stuff works. So just try stuff out. I've got a hummingbird in here. I used to get hummingbirds in here 
and they just they just hang out up here and they'd get all freaked out by the skylights but now now they seem to have figured out how to get out so they're just like flying in here getting freaked out by the skylights and then flying out i don't know <laughs> i'm glad they're going out it was always really sad when they got stuck in here especially when it's like hot in the summer and i'm sitting here running around trying to chase them with a net trying to catch the little dudes um uh, but anyway there's probably half a dozen of them up in my rafters up in the eaves little dead hummingbirds so so yep that's where we're at right now and uh at some point also this inverter this is a 120 volt inverter i'm gonna have that in here too yep and i'm also gonna have this is my little speed control for all of my accessories that run off of that 24 point 48 volt port i'm gonna have the same situation on this so that of course means that i'm gonna to have to run heavy cables through this pivot which isn't a big deal like some cage or something i don't know and then uh, i can put another actuator right there and then i can use a switch on my console to control my three-point hitch probably won't be that one i'll probably just make one so that'll be kind of neat. And if I really get clever, then I can have um, a, a position sensor on the three-point hitch and have it somehow feed a readout, like a digital readout. And it can say, you know, you are one inch off the ground. You are five inches off the ground, whatever. That'd be kind of cool. Mm, yeah, so that's it for now. Uh yeah, I just I love when stuff like that happens where you know you're not really sure how how to do something and the solution just sort of like presents itself and you go, Yep, that'll work, cool. So alright guys. Well thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.